Chinatown, directed by Roman Polanski, has, in my opinion, one of the greatest musical scores ever written for a film. The composer was Jerry Goldsmith. I have always been fascinated by movie music, from the themes of my favorite TV shows as a kid to the first movies I saw in theaters, like Fantasia, The Wizard of Oz, Calamity Jane, The Quiet Man, Bounty, uh, no, Botany Bay, oh my gosh. And as I got older, great scores to movies like Laura, High Noon, The Big Country, To Kill a Mockingbird, Tom Jones, Exodus, Spartacus. Well, that list could go on all night. Very early on, I started collecting record albums of all my favorite film scores. And in college, I started composing incidental music for some of the plays my theater department produced. I wrote a musical and a satirical review and started to figure out orchestrations for the small bands that would play for these various either live events or, or recordings. A year after I got out of UCLA, an ex-student friend of mine got the opportunity to produce a movie shot in Ireland. And she came back from location just about completely out of money, but she still needed music for her film. This was long, of course, before synthesizers and computers. She remembered me from school, gave me a call and asked if I could score her picture. I said, yes immediately, having no idea how to do it. But I got some of my musician friends, several of them UCLA grads who had played in some of those little bands we put together. And I learned how to use a moviola, big green metal film editing machine to spot the individual music cues. I learned about the split second mathematical timing and calculations that went into the synchronization of music and picture. And I came up with a pretty decent sort of Irish sounding score. All woodwinds, brass, drums, and piano, no strings, couldn't afford to hire a string section. In the score, there were a few themes for which I wrote solo lines for some of the players, the trumpet, the oboe, the trombone, the clarinet. And in the recording session, I was so touched and uplifted by the way those soloists, just sight reading their parts, took my melodies and made them their own, made them live and sing. It all came out pretty well. And along with being an actor, I went on to have a wonderful second career as a film composer. Now, when I first saw Chinatown, after the strange and unfamiliar opening percussive sounds of a mallet on the interior piano strings. I was struck to my core by the haunting, wistful theme played many times by a solo trumpet. The theme itself was dark and light at the same time, beautiful and sad as though exuding from an unfulfilled heart. But the way it was played, by the trumpet soloist, the phrasing and improvisatory drawn out notes and small glissando slides, almost like crying, were what made it so profound, so personal. I watched carefully during the closing credits and saw the title, Solo Trumpet, Yuan Raisi, U-A-N, Yuan, Raisi, R-A-S-E-Y. The very next show, TV show, I was asked to compose music for happened to be an odd love story, a mother and a daughter unknowingly having an affair with the same man. A little, a little steamy, a little cheesy, but nonetheless deserving of a good, sexy musical theme or two. I asked my contractor, the lady who hires the musicians, if she could get you on Razy to play on the session. She said, yeah, she could. <laughs> I was beside myself with excitement. I wrote deep into the night, lofty trumpet solos with long phrases full of plaintive longing and lust. 
The next week I walked into the music recording sound stage at Warner Brothers and there sat Yuan Racy in the first trumpet chair, pair of crutches leaning on the music stand next to him. I couldn't believe it. I was looking into the sweet open-hearted face of the man who had produced the chilling heartbreaking sound of the trumpet themes behind Jack Nicholson and Faye Dunaway. Forget it, Jake, it's Chinatown. And there's the trumpet expressing the soul, the sadness, the yearning, the romance, the tragedy of the whole film of old Los Angeles, of tough but tender J.J. Giddis, of broken but beautiful Evelyn Mulray. From Jerry Goldsmith's heart, mind, and pencil to Yuan Racy's soul, talent, and artistry. Teamwork of the first order. Yuan became my first trumpet. Wherever I could find him available, when I knew it was going to be him in the chair, it changed the way I conceived and wrote the score, no matter the subject. My then young son, Michael, who was eight or nine at first, loved to come to my recording sessions. After a couple of those times, Yuan noticed him sitting in the booth and invited Mike to come out and sit next to him at his chair. Be quiet, he said, that was the only rule. And from then on, whenever I was staying up all night writing a new score, little Mike would come up to the piano and ask, hey, dad, is Yuan going to be playing? And I almost always said, yes. And Mike would smile broadly and come with me to the studio to sit with his pal, Yuan. Yuan Raisi was born in 1921 in Glasgow, Montana. He taught himself how to play the trumpet. Don't ask me how. And when he was 16, his family moved to Los Angeles and he started playing with some of the great old big bands. He had contracted polio when he was very, very young and always used his crutches for the rest of his life. He turned down an offer by MGM to be in their regular studio orchestra, a good, well-paying 52-week-a-year gig, because he wanted a contract that guaranteed him Saturdays off so that he could have that day free to go to the racetrack and bet on the horses. <laughs> And he became one of the most often hired and sought after trumpet soloists in Hollywood. You can hear him on American in Paris, Ben-Hur, Bye Bye Birdie, Cleopatra, Gigi, How the West Was Won, My Fair Lady, Singing in the Rain, Spartacus, and Taxi Driver. Among, of course, many others. Yuan died 10 years ago at the age of 90, right near here where I live out in the valley. I miss him very much. I miss having him to write a melody for. But like all great musicians, his music is still around on hundreds of recordings and in dozens of films. So he can be in the room playing for us again at any time. I owe so much of my musical existence to the individual players. I won't list them here, but there are dozens of them who brought my pencil scratchings, later turned into gorgeous ink calligraphy by the studio's music copyists for the musicians' sheet music on their stands, brought those scratchings to life over the years, always taking something, you know, potentially simple or even pedestrian and transforming it with their technique, their momentary inspiration, their caring for the process, their astounding ability to sight read something for the very first time and play it as though it had been in their hearts all of their lives. Their devotion to the movies and their love of music itself. They transformed that music those melodies into something that could, even in the background and often virtually unnoticed, enter into some subconscious emotional space of a listener, an audience member, someone just watching a movie, and lift 
his or her heart into a memorable and moving and sometimes even unforgettable experience. Yuan Racy did that for me in Chinatown. And it changed my musical life. 